Welcome back to the course Life of Christ. We're in the middle of class 29 about Jesus and healing the blind. And I want to invite you to turn to John chapter 9, a pretty famous story about uh, the blind man and the pool of Siloam. Also a pretty long story. So what I'd like to do is first read the whole story so we can keep the whole story together. And then we'll come back and provide a little background on the story and then go through the story and pick out different interesting points. One thing I want you to focus on as we read is trying to understand the points of view and the feelings and the thoughts that the different characters in the story must have had as they went through the day. Okay, so beginning in chapter 9, verse 1. As he went along, Jesus, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seen. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I'm the man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was the Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God. For he does not keep the Sabbath. But others ask, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he's a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he's our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He's of age. He'll speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. A second time, they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I've told you already, and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You're this fellow's disciple. We're disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that's remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he had found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. 
Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard them say this and asked, what, are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. Now, that's just an amazing story. <laughs> I love the emotions. I love the interchanges between people. Uh, I love how this blind man comes off. He had to felt uncomfortable and inferior in some ways, but he acquits himself very well. So let's take a look at some of the background of this. Uh, we think that this story happened most likely uh, somewhere uh, in or near the temple. And uh, this is one of the places where people could sit and beg, uh, just kind of scattered through the temple courts. Uh, as you look up these steps uh, through the, the large gate and then on toward the back, you see in the background uh, the door into the temple itself. Uh, and so we're likely in the court of prayer right here. And then we have uh, the altar there uh, through this uh, first gate uh, where they would offer the sacrifices. And so probably somewhere uh, in the temple courts, uh, Jesus saw this man and the disciples asked their question and he healed him. Uh, going on to give a map uh, where this is, if the temple is uh, where the Dome of the Rock is today, for example, that's where uh, this star is. That's about where this would have happened. And when Jesus sends him to wash, he would have sent him all the way to the Pool of Siloam. Now look all the way down here, the other star. Uh, he has to go out of the temple courts, which is not a short walk, and then down a long hill uh, through the city of David, um, and then go all the way to the Pool of Siloam at the bottom of the city of David. Uh, so we're talking about a walk that's quite long, at least a half a mile, maybe longer than that. Uh, not that he couldn't do it. He'd done it before, obviously, as a blind person. Uh, but that's a long way, and you kind of wonder what he was thinking as he went. It wasn't like he just had to walk 100 feet. Uh, he had to walk a long way uh, with this mud on his eyes or in his eyes and thinking he must look ridiculous, maybe feeling ridiculous. Maybe people were making fun of him as he went down the hill before he got to the pool. Uh, so you, you wonder uh, about uh, his thoughts and his heart on the way down. Then uh, if you actually go to the city of David today, I'll just show you part of uh, it. Uh, they have uh, Hezekiah's tunnel is there, and it starts at a place called the Spring of Gihon, G-I-H-O-N. Uh, and the way you get there now is you go down a lot of steps, and then you get to what they call Warren Shaft Tunnel that leads to the entrance to uh, the spring and also to Hezekiah's Tunnel. So this is part of that tunnel. And then you keep on going down, and finally you get to this uh, junction. If you go left, you can go through the dry tunnel, pretty short tunnel. And if you go right down these steps, you actually go into the water uh, that flows out of the spring of Gihon, uh, and then on through this tunnel all the way down and, and empties out into the pool of Siloam. Now, I th we're pretty certain that uh, the blind man didn't go through the tunnel, although the tunnel was there uh, seven year, 700 years before the blind man was there. So it was there. He could have done that, but most likely he goes on the street uh, outside and goes all the way to the pool of Siloam. But we're just going to kind of walk through the tunnel here uh, quickly. Uh, this is the one that Hezekiah made as he was preparing for the siege uh, of the Assyrians. Um, and we see the, the lighting here, uh, just kind of uh, what the feel of the tunnel is like as you walk through. And then you come out of the tunnel, and it's an area where they used to think this was the Pool of Siloam, all this right here. Uh, but actually, they continue to excavate almost by accident. Uh, they were fixing some pipes in this area. So if you go up these steps right here and go across and down, you see this. You kind of come out uh, right around here in the back of this picture, and you see these steps uh, open up in front of you. Uh, now, they haven't excavated all of the Pool of Siloam because to do that, they'd have to take in all of this and also take down part of a street and probably some buildings. Uh, so they excavated enough of it to give an idea of the scope of what it looked like. Uh, pretty impressive, not a small pool at all, uh, which was probably accurate because it provided water for a lot of people, uh, and is also part of different celebrations that the Jews had with different feasts. You look at just another perspective here. Uh, you see the original pipe that they were trying to fix right up here on the, on the top right, um, and uh, then you see right here. 
uh, then you see again where the pool would have been down here. They've tried to make an artist's rendition of what they think it looked like in the time of Jesus, and have come up with what I feel like is probably a pretty accurate idea. Uh, again, the steps leading into the pool here at the bottom. Uh, now, uh, if you go back and you look at the different points in John chapter 9 through this story, again, uh, one thing I like to always do is to think about people's perspectives. What are they thinking and feeling as they go through the story? And, of course, we mentioned this story briefly in connection to John 5 the other day, where it seems like uh, the cause of this man's blindness uh, is not his sin, as opposed to the cause of the lame man's illness. Uh, when Jesus said, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you, uh, perhaps that's a suggestion that his illness had to do with his sin. But in this case, uh, Jesus said, no, it's just so that, you know, the pre but we can see uh, the works of God displayed in this man. Uh, so that's the reason for it. And uh, if you think about that, that's a great answer because it underlines what kind of a God we have. Do we have a kind of a God that's going to always be looking to punish people, or do we have a kind of God that's looking to give mercy? And in this case, Jesus says, look, it's, it's not his fault and it's not his parents' fault, uh, but God is going to do work in this man's life. Um, then, if you go down to verse 7, it talks about him going to the pool of Siloam, and John specifies it means sent. And so, uh, this man is sent by Jesus, and Jesus has been sent by God to help this man. And so, actually, the name of the pool uh, plays a role in what's happening in this story. They're sent, and God's purposes are achieved because of it. Now, if you go to verse 9, uh, starting in verse 9, then, for the large part of the rest of the chapter, uh, notice how this blind man, once he's cured, continually testifies. And the way that he testifies is by telling different versions, uh, some longer, some shorter, of what Jesus did for him. The neighbors get a little bit longer version. The Pharisees get a little bit shorter version. Uh, his parents, I'd be interested to see the reaction of his parents when they saw their son seen. Um, but uh, he usually uses his personal experience. If you look at verse 9, 11, 15, 17, uh, 27, 30 through 33, 36, and 38, uh, all of those talk in some way about his experience that he had with Jesus, and that's what he relies on. He doesn't try to go for theological arguments very much at all. He mentions a little bit about, we know that God is not listening to sinners, or I think this man's a prophet, uh, but mostly he relies just on his experience. And my favorite verse out of all of the verses is uh, verse 25, when he says, look, I don't know a lot of things, but I do know I was blind, but now I see. Uh, and really, if you think in terms of uh, sharing the gospel about Jesus with people, uh, a lot of people will ignore uh, theological arguments. They will not care about points of doctrine. Uh, they won't care why the church does the practices they do. Uh, they won't be interested in learning more about the Bible itself. They just won't care. But what they'll want to know is, you used to be different. What changed you? And if you can say, look, you knew me before. You know that I've changed. Here is what Jesus did. Then people look at that and they say, you know, that worked. That, that was really effective. That was powerful because I knew this guy beforehand. <laughs> And now this person's different. And so I think that's a, a great example uh, for us when we start to share the gospel of Jesus with people. Let's not worry at first about all the arguments and doctrines and practices. Let's not worry about memorizing a bunch of passages. Let's start with asking the question, what has Jesus done for me? And then share that with people. And not always is it going to be a spectacular story. We're not all blind people or, or sick uh, we don't all have demons cast out of us like Mary Magdalene, for example. Uh, we're not all gang members or prostitutes or drug addicts. I mean, Jesus helped all kinds of people uh, in all kinds of ways. But, uh, you know, our testimony doesn't have to be spectacular. It just has to be genuine, uh, really, where people can see the difference that Jesus has made in us. And that's what mostly convinces people. Uh, verse 16, he talks about how uh, it says, well, this man can't be from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. All right. 
so that's the reasoning of the Pharisees saying, well, you know, we might believe this man, but, uh, you know, if he doesn't keep the Sabbath, it's obviously he's not a very faithful Jew. And so surely God wouldn't use somebody that breaks the Sabbath to do a miracle. But you think they should have known a little bit better by now <laughs> because John 5 had already happened. Uh, and this is John 9. So at least one time they've seen this and maybe more times if they've seen Jesus in Galilee, they know that he works on the Sabbath. But they still question whether or not he's from God. Okay. Uh, now, the idea of uh, what a person who is a godly person should do uh, is a good one. In other words, Jesus says, by their fruit, you'll know them. And so in general terms, we can look at a person's life and actions and fruits and see if they're a godly person or not. That's usually pretty obvious. But the problem here is that although they had part of the criteria right, it wasn't broad enough. They weren't still understanding the principle of uh, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And Jesus is always going to put the person above the day. And so that's what he does here. And the Pharisees don't understand that. And then the interesting little vignette about his parents. In some ways, you're irritated with the parents. You'd think they would be just overjoyed. And their response would be, I don't know what happened. But man, we're so happy for our son. Uh, and there's, there's something going on. We know there's the threat of being thrown out of the synagogue. But even with that threat, you would think that if the relationship were a close one with their son, that they would be so happy, that wouldn't make as much difference to them. So it seems like maybe they're a little distant from their son. Maybe it's been years that he's been an adult and out of the house. And uh, maybe that's why they didn't want to risk anything for him. But, but it's interesting, uh, this reaction. And they're not sure about Jesus. They're not going to try to take a chance for Jesus because they didn't have a personal experience with him. And so they weren't willing to risk their necks uh, for uh, that man since they didn't have a relationship with him. And then uh, you have this whole idea in verse 31 about God does not hear sinners. Um, and so I'd like to go with this one uh, back to a, a verse in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 29 and 31. This may be the basis for what this blind man says. Proverbs 15, 29. It says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Okay? Uh, and so, um, and then you can read uh, the context there as well. Uh, but it seems like this is what uh, this man is referring to. And again, in general, the whole idea of does God pay more attention to people who are being godly and trying to obey him or people who are ignoring him? Uh, obviously, he would pay more attention uh, to those who are trying to be godly. He even mentions that when people are actively disobeying him, he'll say, don't don't even pray for that person. I won't listen. He says that a couple of times in Jeremiah. Uh, but it's obvious also that throughout the Bible, when people are sinners and maybe they haven't come to God yet or they've come to God, but then they've, they've faltered and they've fallen away like David uh, with Bathsheba. Uh, we know that God listens to sinners in those situations. We know that God is eager for people to repent and to call out so that he can respond and that he would bless them and bring them back. Even if it means there's some punishment involved, even if it means there's consequences, uh, God is eager to hear people who have sinned when they repent and want to come back. And so we know that he accepts them. And of course, we know that God hears the righteous. Uh, the, the promise of James 5.16, the, the prayer of a righteous man is effective. Um, so uh, those are some interesting points uh, from this story of Jesus uh, and the man in John chapter 9. And once again, we see that Jesus has great compassion when it has to do with uh, healing people. And in this particular case of healing the blind people, there's also some other additional spiritual lessons that we've been able to point out. Hope that this has been helpful for you. We'll see you next time.